Panels and circuit breakers. In. Cabin pressure control. Normal. Emergency lights. Armed. Armed. My daughter's having her second baby next week. Oh, really? Which one? Sarah, the eldest. Ah. Altimeters, 10-10. so much paper. They must have cut down half a forest for this one. Those things are hopeless. I got a friend with two steel hips, a plate in his head, and never been stopped yet. Morning. May I see you back, sir? This is used in thoracic surgery to open the rape cage. Well, that's all right, sir, but uh, knives are not allowed in cabin luggage. They're not knives. They are surgical scalpels. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but the conveyance of any article which Look, is like... Do you know who we are? We are attending the Convention of the International Association of Surgeons, and these instruments I need for a lecture demonstration. I can vouch for that. I'm secretary. There's no one on this flight who isn't a member of our association. Okay. Sorry, sir. Would you mind opening your bag, sir? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board your Gaelic Airlines special charter flight to Edinburgh. Would you fasten your seat belts, refrain from smoking, and ensure oh, your seat is in the upright position? Thank you. Pardon? Well, everyone on this plane specializes in something. Or is your field so esoteric, I wouldn't understand it if you told me. I, um, um, I do throats. Oh, you, uh, cut throats, see? Eh? <laughs> I'm, uh, abdominal. Tower Flight 103 is ready for start-up and ready to copy clearance to Edinburgh. Flight 103, clear to start. You are clear to Edinburgh, upper blue four, pole hill tower. Climb initially to 4,000 feet to exact flight level 290. Copied, OK, 1010. Copied to ground. Go ahead, copy. OK, we're ready to start. We'll be starting 3, 4, 2 and 1. What, um... Hospital are you connected with? I work in a private clinic. Private clinic? Excuse me. The toilets are in the rear. approaching 4,000 feet. OK, Flight 103, you're clear to London radar. Frequency 127.35. London radar, Flight 103 to Edinburgh. Good evening, Flight 103. We have you in radar contact. You're clear to Flight Level 290, Upper Blue 4. Bull Hill, Squawk Code 4736. Well, if either of us gets appendicitis on this trip, we'll be well taken care of. <laughs> 
copied. Okay, squawking 4736. They'd have to operate with all those plastic knives and forks. <laughs> Plenty of booze for anaesthetic. That's what they used to do, you know, in Nelson's day. Get you plastered, then get out the chopper. Drinks? Would you like a drink, madam? Do you have bourbon? Oh, we do, sir. Ah, on the rocks, with ginger ale, please. And you, sir? I'd like a scotch whiskey with no ice and plain water. I stand rebuked, sir. Don't ask for ice with your whiskey in Edinburgh. You try asking for whiskey with no ice in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Waterhouse speaking. I'd like to welcome you aboard this Gaelic Airlines special charter. We've just reached our cruising height of 29,000 feet. And the lights you can see below you on your left are the city of Birmingham. Weather in Edinburgh is overcast, a bit of drizzle, I'm afraid. And the ground temperature is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. We expect to arrive on schedule, and I'd like to wish you a very pleasant flight. Thank you. Remember Coventry? Are you flying now? Uh, I hadn't got my wings at that time. I didn't get any action till the end of the war. Got plenty of it then, though. Captain, we've got trouble. Human or mechanical? A passenger is locked in the crew toilet with Millie. It doesn't a pass, it's a hijack. I've talked to her through the door. She says he's got a gun and a shampoo bottle that he says is full of nitro. Well, he couldn't have got a gun to the scanner. Only a replica. I don't think Millie feels like testing that. She's had nursing training, enough to recognize a nutter when she sees one. Passengers, no? Not yet. Who's doing the talking? Millie. He's got her between him and the door. What does he want? He hasn't said yet. Find out. And keep that curtain to the cabin closed. Sir. All right, Jim, squawk the hijack here. London radar, flight 103. Flight 103, we have your squawk. Are you free to talk? Yes. Expected hijack details to follow. Your security frequency is 1283. Is over now. We'll be at all times. Coming up on 1283. Flight 103, it's security control. I have a May Day possible hijack. Come on, come on. Duty officer, security control. We have you, Flight 103. Stay on this frequency. If possible, keep an open mic. Flight 103, will do. Yes, still listening, 103. Hold it, Control. Continue Hold it. Yes. Captain, he wants no, us Wait a minute, save time. Control, this is my steward reporting. Have you checked the passengers? They're all there. Did you get that, Control? He's an extra. I got that. Possible stowaway. Possible. Carry on, Stuart. He wants us to divert to Manchester, refuel. He wants two parachutes, one a sporting model, and one million pounds for the aircraft and the passengers. All used, unmarked notes, none smaller than tens. If he gets what he wants, the passengers can disembark. We're to fly on where he won't specify yet. Get that control? I got it, Flight 103. Manchester will come in on the same frequency. Roger, you go and keep the passengers happy. Uh, just bear in mind, Control, we have a very attractive young girl locked in a lavatory with a lunatic. Understood. Matter of fact, this aircraft comes pretty cheap at a million. Especially with 64 of the world's leading surgeons thrown in. Flight 103, Manchester. We have you on radar. Excuse me. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, what has happened to I'm the sorry, sorry, gentlemen and ladies, but... Uh, our stewardess has been taken ill, uh, so I'm on my own. Uh, if you could bear with me, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain yeah. speaking. I'm afraid that overcast at Edinburgh has turned into what the Scots call a Scotch mist and we call a fog. I'm afraid we have to divert to Manchester. We oh. took our stock in your hand to arrange transport accommodation. I'm very sorry about this. Thank you. Flight 103, when ready, you're clear to descend to 6,000 feet over Barton VOR to expect radar vectors ILS. Runway 24. QNH 1009. Your number one. 1009. Zero, zero, okay, Jim, you get the top of descent and approach checks out of the way. Have you told your hijacker it's 6.30 p.m. and the banks are shut? We have told him and he says get one open. Have you told him a bank doesn't hold a million in used notes? Yes, he says get two banks open. Hold it, Captain. Wait a minute, I think you're saying something else. Yeah, what? Right, okay.
he wants us to stop at the end of the runway, not approach the terminal building, and we're to keep the engines running. One man is to hand over the chutes and the money. I'm to take it, dump it outside the toilet door. We close this door. He checks the money. When he knows it's okay, Millie will say so. We can then let the passengers off and refuel. I think I've got it all. Oh, full tanks. What about Millie? She stays where she is till mission completed. Now, pay attention, flag my way. Have you tried to get him talking? Sometimes you can talk these people out of it. He won't talk, only via Millie. Can you tell us more about that bottle of shampoo? She says he's got something taped to it. Could be a detonator and a fuse. No chance of rushing him in there. Well, through a locked door. Look, there are only two of us to fly this plane. And may I remind you, Control, that if we come down in pieces, we are over a densely populated area. Appreciate that. If you could get him to modify his terms, you might fix something clever down here. Appreciate that, but this is an aircraft, not an auction room. And Millie is in there with him. Descent check completed, Skip. Right. Speed's OK. 15, flap. Flap selected. Approach check completed. Magister. We're out of 10,000 for 6,000 feet, approaching Barton VOR. Got that flight 103. Suppose you jam the toilet door... Sorry, Control, we're busy up here. OK, understood. What shall I tell him? Tell him... Tell him we're waiting for an answer. 103, make a left turn on heading of 200. Clear down to 2,500 feet. Clear to join the ILS. Runway 24. You have 15 miles to run. Complete your landing checks. Gear down, landing checks. Gear going down. Two million. Nice girl. Yes. Quite like her too. Outer marker, landing flaps. Flaps selected, start watch. Trouble is she's got a fella already. In the rag tray. You still there, Control? Yes, listening and recording. Look forward to meeting Millie. Captain, he's getting rough. He says we're stalling. Millie's trying to calm him down, but it sounds pretty bad. Did you hear that, Control? Tell him it may take time, but we'll have what he wants. Well, you make sure the shoots of the money are in order, because we're going to be in here with him when he checks it. So is Millie and the gun and the nitro. Roger. On final skip. Flight 103, you're clear to land. Fate, Fred. Perhaps it's our whiskey. Uh, at this point, I'd take it without ice myself. I'd take it deep frozen. <laughs> All here, Millie. Well, there, sir. Control. Control with you. Carry on. Well, he's got what he asked for. He'll be checking it now. Tower. With you, 103. Where are those buses for the passengers? Well, they're on their way, Captain, and the refuelers. Ladies and gentlemen, owing to technical difficulties, we're unable to disembark at the terminal. But if you'd all move forward now, coaches are waiting. Please remember your hand baggage. Thank you. Passengers disembarked. What now? Right?
Here's his order, sir. We're to fly to La Havre. Not land, overfly at what he calls a moderate altitude. He'll then give further instructions. Get that control? We got it. We suggest you comply. Will you check with French air traffic or shall we? To keep on this frequency, we'll liaise and confirm. Roger. Roger and bon chance. Merci. Refueling complete, Jim? Yes, sir. Right, let's get this thing buttoned up. Okay, flight 103, you're cleared to taxi. Let's go. Stuart. Sir? You think you could rustle up some coffee? Yes, sir. Oh, and see if that bastard will let Millie have a drink. I think she needs one. I'll try, sir. <laughs> and I was going to retire in six months. You know, in nearly 40 years of flying, the worst I've ever had is uh, a bit of German flak in my backside, a little slightly misdirected British rifle fire slightly higher up, and one tyre burst in the mortar. <laughs> You'll retire yet, sir? What do you do? Grow gladioli. <laughs> Enjoy my grandchildren and infuriate my wife. Where are we? Oh, I think if I said I wasn't sure, you put me right to within a hundred yards. I was looking forward to that pleasure. That is Le Havre. Even through patchy cloud, anybody with a school atlas could spot that one. Thank you, sir. That's probably why he chose it. One large gin and tonic, one lager, and we're now over La Havre. Await further instructions. You weren't in the war, of course. But for the first hour or so, danger can be quite a novelty, even quite entertaining. But if this went on for a few more hours, or days, like some hijacks, you could learn some very nasty things about my character. And you about mine. Of course. Fresh orders from His Majesty. You getting this, Control? Loud and reasonably clear. All right, carry on, Stuart. He wants us to make a 90-degree turn to port, head for Antwerp. Antwerp. Reduce height to 3,000 feet and depressurize, fly at minimum speed. We'll inform French air traffic. Flight 103, this is France Control. Your given edge is one. Oh, and Captain, we've asked the French Air Force to scramble a couple of fighters to tail you. They might see where he jumps. Oh. Well, ask them to keep their lights on and not tell me too close. Speed's okay, Jim. Fifteen flap. Fifteen flap. Lap selected. Oh, and just remind them that we drive on the left. <laughs> Morale sounds pretty good, Captain. It would be if we weren't thinking of Millie. Hey, uh, first must take his mag. Hmm? What's that? Well, if we hedge a bit to the north, we can keep over water all the way. We can get into Antwerp without overflying any land except for the last ten miles. He's not going to jump into the sea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you get that, Control? Control? Yes, yes, I'm hearing you. Uh, try it. We'll reroute you. Flight 103, repeat. What is your altitude? Just coming down to... 3,000 feet. All clear of all traffic. And now depressurize, Skipper. Oh. Control, would you mind telling those cowboys that the international language of civil aviation is English? That's the French Air Force. What, all of it? Well, tell them to keep off this frequency. Roger. Your coffee, gentlemen. Oh. Thanks. Keep your ear to that door. What's your position now? Uh, I'm just off to yet, and I'm still over water, but he won't know that until he comes out. What happens then is anybody's guess. Captain, Millie's crying in there. Well, tell her everything's going to be all right. I wish I could be sure of that. Control, I think his plan may be to jump when we're right over the French-Belgian border. That way nobody will know which country he's landed in. We've already alerted Belgian security. How's visibility? Patchy to poor. Well, those fighters are right behind you. Could they see him when he jumps? Well, it's difficult to if say. If he used the parachute before, he could free fall for the first thousand feet. They'd never see him. Could he 
jump from your forward passenger door? Well, it's very tricky because it's ahead of the wing, but, uh, well, I suppose it's just about feasible if he knows what he's doing. What about the rear door? If he goes out one of the rear doors, he'll be into the engines and end up a strawberry jam. Now, look, I'm five minutes flying time from the frontier. If anybody's got any bright ideas down there, we would appreciate it. Captain, he's coming out. But to keep this door shut, I couldn't hear everything Millie was saying. She's a bit hysterical, but the message is she gets it first, then the lot of us, if we try anything funny. We heard that, Captain. Right. We are three minutes from the frontier. Stay off the air, everybody, while I handle this. Roger. I'm listening. But we don't know when. Suggest you scramble all police forces between uh, Dunkirk and Ostend. Roger. You're right, William. Yes. Thank you, sir. Well, how soon do we open that door? I go with your guess. You'll jump a mile or so from the front here. One side or the other. Good. Cause maximum confusion. You take over, Jim. I think this is my job. I think you'll do, love. We're off here, Tommy. Oh! Are we still over water? Just for about a minute. Get on with it, Tommy. Where's the money? In the cabin with the chutes. I think I should get extra. After all, I dreamt up the whole idea. Stuck in that blizzard in Oslo? I think I should have extra. Being locked up in that toilet for hours all by myself. And who was it who suggested we should land one hour's drive from the centre of the diamond train? Or overland skip. Right. Drop? Yes. We were worrying about you. Don't worry. He's gone. Is everybody all right? Couldn't be better. Well done, Flight 103. We're proud of you. It's what we're paying for. Proceed to Antwerp. Will do. <laughs> <laughs> 